text organizational elements, informational text, because practice makes perfect. In action, look at this excerpt. How easy is it to follow on a scale of 1 to 5? 1 being not all that easy, all the way up to 5, which is super easy. Lemons as a cleaner. Lemons have been used as a cleaning agent for hundreds of years. The astringent properties of lemons as well as the acidity work together to break through grease and grime. The nice smell surely beats ammonia. As a cooking item, lemons are great for enhancing the flavor of many traditional dishes. Entrees, lemons are often used to cook in chicken and fish dishes as the acidity helps tenderize the meat. Desserts, the sweet but tart combination, make lemons a favorite on their own, like in lemon meringue pie. They are also commonly used to help enhance flavors in other fruit items, such as cranberry bread or apple pie. How easy is this excerpt to follow on a scale from 1 to 5? In action. Look at this excerpt. How easy is it to follow? On a scale of 1 to 5, with 1 being not all that easy, all the way up to 5, which is super easy. Lemons. As a cleaner. Lemons have been used as a cleaning agent for hundreds of years. The astringent properties of lemons, as well as the acidity, work together to break through grease and grime. The nice smell surely beats ammonia. As a cooking item. Lemons are great for enhancing the flavor of many traditional dishes. Entrees. Lemons are often used to cook in chicken and fish dishes, as the acidity helps tenderize the meats. Desserts. The sweet but tart combination make lemons a favorite on their own, like in lemon meringue pie. They are also commonly used to help enhance flavors in other fruit items, such as cranberry bread or apple pie. How easy is this excerpt to follow on a scale of 1 to 5? The Organization of Nonfiction. Make sure to check out the course for study guides. Some terms to know for textual organization. The use of headings and subheadings. The use of bold or underlining. Question answer structure. List structure. Parallel structures. Headings and subheadings. These help the reader understand how the text is organized. Often, these divide text into more readable chunks of the passage. They can help direct the reader if they are looking for certain information. You can see in this example, mitigation strategies, that would be the heading that incorporates everything that the passage is about. And then the topic or the, the major idea is broken down into several subheadings to help organize the information and to chunk it. So if you're looking through this particular text, you can direct yourself to a particular subheading. You don't necessarily have to read the entire passage in order. Lighting and maintenance are examples of subheadings under the mitigation strategies heading. Check it out. So Discussion. This would be a level one heading. Here you would put text for the discussion. Lots of text goes here. Heading for one important part. That would be your level two heading. Here you put an important point that deserves its own subsection. Heading for your second important part. This is a level two heading. You put more information here. Lots of writing goes here. Notice how these second level section titles are flush left and bold. Here's a third level heading. Text goes here on the same line. This heading is indented and placed in bold, but only the first word is capitalized. This is a level three heading. The use of bold or underlining works similarly to headings and subheadings. These help the writer organize their thoughts and ideas in a workable chunks of information. Use bold and underline to help you find important information. Often when you are skimming for a specific piece of information, you can use the headings or bold items to get to the right section quickly. This structure makes use of white space to separate sections and ideas. This example is from an M&M interview, and you can see that you have your subsections all in bold or um, italics. You know, it's set apart, and you can see it set apart differently here. And then you can go to any area where you want, any question here that you want, or any idea here that you want, and get information directly related to that subsection. For example, congratulations on your success with recovery. Um, of course, italicize the name, uh, the name 
of an album has it surprised you at all and then you have the answer here so you can see this is an uh, of course an interview here's the interviewers question here's the answer given by Eminem I'm a little surprised I was certainly more confident in this album than the last one it feels good to have your work respected again winning awards is cool but at this point I'm in it for the support and so you can see with any other section here that you check out and uh, that the information under the bold heading or the bold question or the bold idea is going to be directly related. And then, of course, using the white space really helps to set the sections apart. List structure and bullet points. This one is pretty obvious. Again, this structure can help the reader keep the information straight. A list structure may also hint at the importance of items. Notice how the duties listed on this resume go from most accomplished to least skilled. So we have an ABC engineering consultant from some town, Arkansas, uh, a civil engineer, 110 to present, provided civil engineering design and management of oil and natural gas development development projects for firms Alaska office so this would be the most accomplished and then down here maintain excellent files and stay in constant contact with all clients the order of importance decreases as the list on the resume goes down examples of list structures we have bullets managers often need to review team performance in such areas as they put a colon then they bullet point each of the um, review items and then there's a period at the end to show that this is the end of the list. We have letters like in a outline one the first item A and B are nested items one and two underneath this main heading um, the second item and you could have nested items in here as well the third item the fourth item and so forth numbering four compelling advantages of truck advertising one two, three, and four, all listing the compelling advantages of truck advertising and it helps to organize the information in a way that makes it easier for the reader. Parallelism. This is the repetition, repetition of a chosen grammatical form to make a strong impression on the reader. Look at the example. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epic of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. By repeating it was in the passage, the readers are prompted to focus on the traits of the age they will read about in the succeeding passages. Parallelism is not just a persuasive technique. It can also be used as a structural device. Many speeches rely on parallelism to drive home their ideas. A public speech by Martin Luther King Jr. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the Red Hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Martin Luther King Jr. I have a dream speech. You can see the parallelism that he uses. I mean, seriously, who doesn't know the name of this speech? And did you ever wonder why everyone knows it so well? It's his structure. That's what made it memorable, that I have a dream. The repetition there, the parallelism within the speech makes it so memorable. It's really all about structure. Practice. Identify two parallel structures in this Elvis song. Hound dog. You ain't nothing but a hound dog crying all the time. You ain't nothing but a hound dog crying all the time. Well, you ain't never caught a rabbit, and you ain't no friend of mine. When they said you was high class, well, that was just a lie. When they said you was high class, well, that was just a lie. You ain't never caught a rabbit, and you ain't no friend of mine. Any questions? 